the twist of what we are talking about in this God values your soul is that in the uh, in James God is reminding us that if somebody who has known the word of God who has become a Christian but falls into sin or rejects the word of God or doesn't follow the Christian way or is enticed into sin then it is our duty to go to him to or her and that is why we use it here as so a brothers uh, and sisters if anyone anyone among you wanders from the salvation truth of the gospel of Christ and someone else evangelizes I mean you go to him and prayerfully turns him or her back into faith in Christ and so it means that you go to the person and say that you know brother sister uh, you're not supposed to do that. What you are doing, you know, maybe you didn't realize, maybe, but, you know, this is the word of God. This is what you should do. So consider it again and uh, think about it because uh, this is not a Christian way or it's not the right way to follow. Or if somebody is embarking on something or doing something that you know is not right, you have to go to him. And if or her, and if he doesn't want to listen, just in the example of Matthew 18, 15, 16, that the Lord Jesus Christ talked about. And take one more person with you so that you can go and discuss with the person and say, you know, this is the thing you should do or you shouldn't do this because God's way is this. You know, consider it and pray with the person and so that the Spirit of God will allow the person. This is what we are to do. But if the person doesn't want to hear, you've done your part. So that is what uh, we are talking about. The goal is that in this case of uh, uh, James 5, um, 19 and 20, God is expecting that the, your intervention, your intermediary or whatever intercession or whatever you do in an effort to bring the person from or to wake the person up. You say, oh, you know, this is not right. This is not, or, you know, to allow the person to, Think about what he is doing so that, okay, let's use one word. The person doesn't want to go to church anymore. The person doesn't want to read the scripture. The, what, the person is uh, doing other things, other bad things. Or the person is, uh, you see the person doing some things which is not a Christian way. This is when you have to go to the person and say that, no, uh, this is the right way. Do you know that this thing is not... A godly, it's not a Christian way. You, do you know that this? So help the person to understand in a humble way. Or take another person with you, in this case, and try to convert the person, as the King James says, and uh, so that the person who does it, if you go or uh, uh, you go with someone else, and that means with the evidence of two, with, the, with the witness of one other person, it confirms that whatever we pray, and God will answer. So that is the goal of what we are talking about here, that when we see something that is wrong, uh, let the brother or sister know that he or she who turns a sinner from the error or from his sins, and, you know, will save a soul from death because what does the scriptures also tell us? Because uh, he has so many examples for us when he says God values uh, your soul. Uh, what does he, we see? Uh, the prophets, didn't they prophesy and prophesy and prophesy uh, many times? Because they know what has gone on. In uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, 16 to 18 says, Now it came to pass, at the end of seven days, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his uh, wicked 
win to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. So God is saying that when you know, if you don't know it's different, but when you know that the, the person has done something wrong, it is your duty to go to him, to warn him, and let him know. Well, of course, in the Christian way, you don't go and just, if you don't repent, you're going to die. You know, no, that thing. You tell him that, no, this is uh, God's will. You know, what you are doing is not uh, the scriptural way. So, uh, you know, look at the scriptures. Let's consider it and, uh, you know, try to understand that God's way is this. God's way is that. And that allows the person to also reflect on it and also uh, have the opportunity to change because God doesn't want anybody to die. God doesn't want anybody to lose their soul. God doesn't want anyone uh, who may have uh, uh, you know, been enticed by the devil. All the problems we have in this world, it is not because that person wants to do them. Of course, we know that because we were all born in sin, Sometimes we do a little bit of good. Sometimes we do a little bit of uh, bad. Sometimes we do a little bit. When we have the Spirit of Christ in us, we produce the fruit of the Spirit. When you have the fruit of the Spirit in you, everything that you do, and you are always constantly, you have put on Christ. You put on the Word of God. You have put on every requirement that God says. And there is no uh, uh, room for sin. There is no room for the wrong things to be done. There's no room to be a rebel or to be obstinate, to be, you know, to... What happens is that when we surrender our life to God and we are following the pattern and we really surrender everything to God, God gives us His Holy Spirit and His Holy Spirit is one who does what? Who convicts us, who tells us that, oh, you know, that thing you did, after we've done it, the Holy Spirit will say, you know, that thing you've done, you know it's not right. You know it's wrong. And then we say, oh, sorry, Lord. That's when we go and plead, Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry. But when somebody who doesn't have the Holy Spirit discernment, they sin, they sin today, they sin tomorrow. They don't feel it. They, they just like, for those, uh, let's use the example of those who are doing the rioting, who are burning houses and all that. They are filled with evil spirit. It's demonic. When you are controlled by evil spirit and demonic power, when you do the wrong thing, you want to do it again. And you don't have any feeling that, oh, or any remorse. You don't have any repentance in you. It is only when things settle down. And you start thinking, and the Holy Spirit gives you a little bit of noise. You know, you know what he did. That's then you say, "Oh," but if you can't realize that, then you are not filled. So we all have that element of uh, conviction that the Holy Spirit sometimes will uh, not sometimes. The Holy Spirit will always tell us whenever we do the wrong thing. If we are not getting that from the Holy Spirit, then it means that. We are still uh, being controlled and manipulated by the evil works of the devil. So we need to also realize that God values our soul. And that's why he told us that, you know, we, we are one or another. We are a, a brother, a sister. So the thing that we are to do and not to be uh, uh, saying that other people are this. When people, when a brother, for example... Uh, look at what the Lord Jesus Christ says in uh, Galatians 6, 1-3. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, basically the short for if, if somebody has sinned, you, are, uh, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Verse 3, For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So, 
don't boast just be humble make sure that you do things in a humble way all right second thessalonians 3 13 and 15 also reminds us what does it say but as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good and if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed yet do not count him as an enemy but admonish him as a brother the short form is that yes you are all christians you have all of this uh, thing and uh, somebody suddenly develop a habit habit of going of doing the wrong thing don't go and visit the person and say oh uh, great you do uh, you, um, we didn't see you at church and this thing is oh well uh, I went to Las Vegas I did all this and oh you went to Las Vegas you did uh, what did you go and do I went to gamble said, oh then mm -mm, sorry that's not good so oh yeah you should come with me next time you know if you encourage that person that you are uh, helping him so what you should do is say oh no what the scripture is telling us you know don't go to him next time say sorry you know uh, if you're going to be going there i'm not going i don't think i'm going to come to your home anymore i'm going to i don't think i can uh you know come and eat anything in your home anymore because if you do you are sinning and i can't be part of your sin so you are telling him as a brother in a nice but not as an enemy you see, so that is what uh, we are being told here that God wants us to admonish, to be careful that when a brother or sister is uh, doing something, you go to him and let uh, him or her know that what they are doing is not the right way and that you are not going to be part of that uh, thing because it is against God's uh, commandment. So in any case, uh, there's so much that we have uh, gotten from here, but uh, the whole idea is uh, God wants us to be careful about it. And uh, the last part is uh, uh, what we have in, the, uh, we don't have to read it, uh, the Apostle Peter is telling us that we have to be uh, careful not to assume that because we have not been punished uh, nothing has happened to us and god is patient with all of us he's patiently waiting for us to change to repent from our ways and so we need uh, to always pray that god should have mercy upon us he loves us he cares for us and that is why he gave us everything so that through christ and we can always uh, request what we need and he will take care of it for us so god really cares about when we pray for example, look at Manasseh, what he did. God forgave him. So if God forgave him and restored him, and then wouldn't God also forgive us now that in the New Testament, you know, we haven't done as much evil as, but we shouldn't say that we are better. But in any case, it is all by God's grace. So let us continue to pray that God should give us his grace and mercy in everything that we do and allow us to enjoy the necessary blessing that we need on a daily basis. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and pray that we will continue uh, to receive uh, the uh, confidence that when we pray to him, he hears us and he also cares for our soul. He doesn't want us to perish in any sin. And so may God help us. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention. Again, let us kneel down to pray.